loves to receive gifts. I've never met anybody who doesn't love to receive gifts. Now, if you know me, you know that I stay up late and I don't like to get up early, but there's one day a year that I love getting up early. Christmas, right? My birthday will work as well. Yeah, Christmas. Because I love to receive gifts. Actually, I'm looking pretty uh, dazzling today, aren't I? Yes, whoa. I almost took the jump right there, didn't I? So this, this was a Christmas gift uh, from my wife. Uh, she says I always look handsome anyway. So, um, so gifts, we, you know, we love to receive gifts. Well, you know what? I've got some great news for you this morning. God loves to give them. God loves to give gifts. He's not holding back on you. God's not giving out all these gifts and says, oh, not you. Or he doesn't like run out when he gets to you. So, oh, sorry, I ran out. The Bible says in James 1, verse 16, that every, say every, every, every good and perfect gift comes from above, from our Father who created the heavenly light, speaking of the stars. So what God is saying there is that the proof that God's not holding back on you, because he says every good and perfect gift comes from above, comes from our Father, and he says, and the example of that, the demonstration of that, the proof of that is just look above and see all of the stars. Now, one of my favorite classes when I was in college was astronomy. I loved astronomy. I remember when the professor uh, was teaching about, you know, the beginning of the universe, and, and he talked about the Big Bang, and, and he said, you know, we don't really know, you know, how it happened, and I raised my hand, and I said, I know how it happened, and he goes, you do? And I said, yes, the Big Banger made it happen, God himself, and everybody laughed, you know. It wasn't a Christian school, it was a secular school, but... But anyway, I loved astronomy. I love, we go out, we're late night, we look at the stars. Do you know that astronomers have determined that there are over 100 million stars just like our sun in our Milky Way galaxy? Over 100 million stars. And what's even more amazing is that astronomers have discovered there are over 100 million galaxies of 100 million million stars and there are some mega galaxies that are like a thousand times bigger than the Milky Way galaxy and so uh, in this book it says if you want to kind of picture of just how vast the universe is go to the beach pick up one grain of sand that would represent a million stars say our God is big our God is big. Listen, what he's saying is every good and perfect gift is from above, from our Father who created the stars. What he's saying there is that God created these stars, and most of the stars we can't see with our visible eye. It's only been more recent, and the, and the, and the better our, our technology and telescopes, the more newer galaxies. We're, all, we're discovering new galaxies all the time. So God is saying there, if he created these stars that are limitless, then his gifts are limitless as well. So say, Father, I receive your gifts. That's all he wants us to do. We don't have to work for them. We don't have to do anything. We don't have to get all religious and get ourselves all cleaned up. We just need to wake up in the morning and say, Good morning, Holy Spirit. Woo! I receive you, Holy Spirit, and I receive all of your gifts because, Lord, it's through the gifts that I am the fragrance of Christ, the sweet aroma of the anointing. The word Christ means the anointing. See, it's the gifts of the Spirit that enable us to change the atmosphere of our world. And God wants you to be a game changer. God wants you not to complain about your place of work, not complain about your boss and your co-workers. He wants you to do something about it. And we can't do it in our own strength. It's not a matter of our thinking, our emotions, or our will. God wants us to do it in the spiritual realm. God wants us to be the aroma, the fragrance of Christ. And the fragrance of Christ are the spiritual gifts. Jesus operated in the gifts of the Spirit. That's how he was able to change the world. God wants you to change the world through the gifts of the Spirit. 
He wants them to be released in your life so that you're going to change the aroma. You're going to change the atmosphere of your home, your family. You're going to change the atmosphere of your place of work. No whine about it. Don't complain about it. Say, God, give me the gifts of the Spirit to change it. God wants you to change the atmosphere of your church. God wants you to change the atmosphere of where you shop, where you exercise. Wherever you go, you take the anointing of the Holy Spirit with you, and He wants you to change. When I go into a restaurant, I say, Holy Spirit in me, change the atmosphere of this restaurant. God wants us to change things. He wants us to make a difference. And it's through spiritual gifts that we change the world. It's through spiritual gifts that we are the fragrance of the Holy Spirit. So in February and January, we looked at the first category of spiritual gifts. Those are, <coughs> excuse me, those are the office gifts or the minister gifts. They're called the minister gifts because they're given to church leaders. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Not everyone receives the minister gifts. God gives them to certain individuals so that they can equip the entire body of the church to do the work of the ministry, to be released in the gifts of the Spirit. It's to the church leaders that the laying on of hands and the ministering of the gifts of the Spirit are released and activated and brought to fire. So God has appointed ministers, elders, leaders, pastors, apostles, evangelists, teachers, so that we as a church can be strong and healthy, and it's up to us to come under their covering and to receive from them. The majority of Christians in America are not connected to a local church, which means they're not under the fivefold ministry gifts of apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, which means those gifts are not being released into their life, they're not being activated, they're not being covered, and they're not being blessed, and they're missing out. And they're not being the fragrance of Christ that God wants them to be. They're inactive Christians. They think, well, you know, I can, I, I'm okay, I'm following God. No, you're not okay. God has so designed the body of Christ that you need to be like my, my arm saying, you know what, body, I don't think I need you today, and just decide to go off on his own. It's not going to do a whole lot by itself. So the first category of gifts that we looked at, January and February, are the ministry gifts or the office gifts. They're found in Ephesians 4, verse 11 and 12, where the Bible says that God first appointed apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. In the month of March, we looked at the motivational gifts found in Romans chapter 12, verse 7 through 10. They're also referred to as the believer's gifts. And the reason for that is because these gifts, which were dormant inside of us, we saw glimpses of them. They were activated when we became a Christian, when we became born again, when the Holy Spirit came and dwelled in our spirit and we came alive in Christ. And when we came alive, so did the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the motivational gifts. They came alive in us. The motivational gifts, they motivate us. That's why they're called motivative, motivational gifts. We see a need and they say, you can make a difference. That gift in us says, you can make a difference. You can change things. There are seven motivational gifts. The first four involve mostly speaking. Prophecy. Proph prophecy is simply hearing God for someone else, for their encouragement, comfort, or to strengthen them. There's teaching, that's making the Word of God come alive, come practical. There's encouragement where someone just needs to believe that they can do it. You can do it. And then leadership, being able to take someone from here to there. Those are the, the, the speaking gifts or the motivational gifts. And then there are also the service gifts, the gift of giving. That's when you see someone who has a financial need and God's given you both the means and the passion to make a difference in that person's life. Maybe a homeless person, maybe someone at your office, and, and, uh, and you, you come alongside them. Uh, when my sister moved here, she, she like myself, wasn't raised in a, in a, in a Christian home, and, and she made some really bad decisions. And she said, you know what? Uh, I need to get my life straight. And I said, well, it's not going to happen there. Move to Florida. She put everything that she owned in a van. She had not, just her and two kids in a van, and by the time she got here, because of those of you who had the gift of giving, you furnished a complete 
uh, apartment for her, for her two children and for herself. You saw a need, and God motivated you to meet that need in her life. And now that's what she does. She also has a gift of giving, and she is passing it forward. She's doing that with other, um, with other ladies who are, who are starting over again. She's helping them. So that's the gift of giving. The gift of mercy is when you see someone suffering and you come alongside them. You have empathy for them. You're willing to come in their shoes and help them through the process. And then there's the gift of service. It's also uh, referred to as the gift of helps. It's when you come along someone and you help them. Or the gift of hospitality. It's when you meet a physical need. So rather than whine about a need or say, well, what's wrong? Instead, meet the need. Because when God shows you a need, he's motivating you to make a difference. Those are the motivational gifts. So we studied those in the month of March. And last week we began studying the gifts of the Spirit, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, or the manifestation gifts. They're also referred to as the charismatic gifts, from the word charismata, which is charis, grace, mata, or gifts, the grace gifts. They're called the manifestation gifts because they refer to uh, then from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7, where the Bible says the manifestation of the Spirit, of the charisma, the charismatic gifts of the Spirit, is given to all. Say all. all. Includes me. Say includes me. All includes me. All right? So the manifestation of the Spirit is given to all, to each one, that's me, for the profit of everyone. Uh, other translations talk about for the common good or so that everyone can be helped. So we need the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And we've been given some, some teachings. Some teachings have kind of infiltrated the church that, had, that have said that the gifts of the Spirit were just for the early church, just for the apostles. No, we need them today. And I'm going to show you exactly why we need them today. So the manifestation gifts, or the gifts of the Spirit, they reside with the Holy Spirit. They don't reside with us, they reside with Him, but He lives in us, which means we have access to all nine gifts of the Spirit. They are available to us. So as the Holy Spirit in us sees a need, all we have to do is release the Holy Spirit to operate, and all nine of those gifts are available to us. They, are, uh, they have been divided into three categories. The first category are the spoken gifts. They are the things that God wants us to say. They operate through our voice or through speech. They minister to our spirit. So they operate through our voice or the things that God wants us to say. They minister to our spirit. The first would be Tongues. Tongues is the Greek word glossolia. It just means a language. In this case, it's a heavenly language where we speak directly to God and only God can understand us. But when we speak in tongues, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 14, 1 through 3, that we don't edify others, we edify ourselves. So remember, the spoken gifts are to minister to the spirit. I am a spirit, I have a soul, and I live in a body. So when I speak in tongues, I'm ministering to the real me. I am a spirit. I have a soul. My soul gives expression to my spirit. My soul is how I think. It's my will. It's the things uh, that God's called me to. It's my emotions. It's the things that I love. But I am a spirit. When God sees me, he sees me as a spirit that expresses itself as a soul. So the spoken gifts, they minister to our spirit. Tongues ministers to my spirit. It's really interesting. I was in the back prayer room, and I was praying. And just before I came out the door, bam, my, 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 my prayer language just came out of me. I didn't plan it. It was a manifestation of the spirit of God. It's like God wanted to say, oh, before you step through that door, bam, you need this download. And he just gave it to me, and I felt God just come over me. As soon as I was willing to release my prayer language, God ministered. He edified my spirit. He built me up and he strengthened me so that I could share this message with you in anointing and power and not in my own mind and my own thinking. So the spoken gifts, they minister to our spirit, the real you. The gift of tongues is for self-edification. The interpretation of tongues is when someone speaks in, a, in this heavenly language 
and God gives an interpretation, and it's for the body. So it ministers to the spirit of the body or the listeners. The third of the spoken language is prophecy. And that also ministers to the spirit. Someone has a word for you, and they speak right into your spirit with that word. But also it could be a prophecy to the body. So it can minister to the entire spirit of the body, South Brandon Worship Center. Or it could be a prophecy or a message to a nation or possibly to a world. So the, so the prophecy is a, is a ministering to the spirit as God speaks to an individual, to a church, or possibly to a nation or to the world. And we're going to be looking at these gifts next Sunday. Pastor Chuck, uh, our teaching pastor, is going to be uh, opening this up, and I'm really excited about hearing what God's going to say through him. In two weeks, we're going to be talking about the power gifts. So the, the uh, spoken gifts are the things that God wants us to say. The power gifts are the things that God wants us to do. And they operate through our heart. So the spoken gifts, they operate through our mouth, through our voice. The power gifts, they come through our, our hearts, where our spirit is. It's like, it's like God wants to do something. You can just feel it in your spirit. You just got to let it go. That's the power of God. I sense, sometimes I sense the power of God's over me. My hands get hot. That's the power of God. It dwells up in my heart. It just wants to be released in my life. Now, the spoken gifts, they minister to our spirit, but for the most part, power gifts minister to our body. Power gifts minister to the physical realm. So the spoken gifts minister for the most part to the spiritual realm. The power gifts minister to the physical realm. So they're the gifts of miracles, healings, and faith. The gifts of miracles is when God tells you he's going to do something that doesn't make any sense, and you believe God for it. And it can't be explained. A miracle, I have a good friend, Tim Lighthall, he shared um, at our church a few months ago, and, and God has been, uh, been leading him to go to Pakistan. God's doing a revival there. And he's been seeing miracles. He's been seeing things that cannot be explained uh, in the natural. In Pakistan, they don't have hospitals. They don't have all the access to doctors and everything. So all they have is Jesus. But you know, when all you have is Jesus, it's all you need, right? And he is seeing miracles. He's seeing the blind to see. He's seeing limbs growing out. He's seeing miracles. Those are the gift of miracles. And then there's a gift of healing. Healings are different from miracles. Now, you can also have a miracle, a financial miracle. Uh, a, a, a miracle is anything that God does in the physical realm that cannot be explained. And then there's the gifts of healings. It's plural. The gifts of healings is when something has invaded your body, maybe a virus, maybe cancer, maybe a sickness or a disease, whatever it is, something has invaded your body, it doesn't belong, and God gives someone the gift of healing so that that person has the faith to tell that virus or that sickness to go, that it doesn't belong, that we're the temple of the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit and my temple doesn't want to share with any kind of virus, cancer, or sickness, or anything else. So you ask for the gifts of healing to rise up within you. When someone says they're sick, like I had an opportunity just to, to pray for someone in this service. When they told me, I just said, Holy Spirit, gift of healing, rise up within me and be released into this person. It's just releasing God, just releasing the Holy Spirit. That's the gifts of healing. So it's miracles, it's healings, it's faith. Faith is hearing God and releasing God. So the Bible says in, in Amos 6, 8, that God doesn't do anything until he first reveals it to his prophets. So God wants to do something in heaven. He gives you the faith to believe him for it. So those are the power gifts. The power gifts are the things that God wants you to do. And, and they, for the most part, operate through your heart and, and in the physical realm. Today we're going to focus on the third category, and they are the revelation gifts. The revelation comes from the word uh, logos. In John 1, 1, the Bible says, In the beginning was the word, the logos. The logos was with God. The logos was word. It was referring to Jesus. Jesus was the revelation of God. Jesus said, you want to know, know what the Father looks like? You want to know what the Father is like? Look at me. Jesus was the revelation. He was the logos of God. 
So the revelation gifts are the things that God wants you to know. The spoken gifts are the things that God wants you to say. They minister to your spirit. The power gifts are the things that God wants you to do. They minister in the physical realm. The revelation gifts are the things that God wants you to know. So they are discernment of spirits. He wants you to know how the spiritual realm is operating in your life and around you. How the spiritual realm is affecting you, holding back God's blessing from being released in your life. There's also a word of knowledge. That word knowledge is gnosis. Except for it's not something that you know that you've picked up on, that you've observed. It's supernatural knowledge. You know something and there's no rational reason. There's no reason why you'd know this about this person or this situation. God just downloads it and tells you something about that person. And they're like, why? How'd you know that? And then there's a word of wisdom. That's the word Sophia. It's the word that describes a plan of action, the steps that you need to take to get from here to get to there. So what I wanted to do is I want to give you kind of a picture so that you can see how these, these uh, revelation gifts, the things that God wants you to know, and they operate through your mind. The spoken gifts is through the words, power gifts, uh, they operate through your heart. The revelation gifts, they operate through your mind, the things that God wants you to know, and they minister to the soul. So for me, uh, in terms of the, of the minister gifts, I am an apostolic pastor. The motivational gifts are leadership, uh, teaching, and encouragement. And the three gifts that I operate most in the gifts of the Spirit are the revelation gifts. God gives me words of knowledge, words of wisdom, and discernment of spirits. I have a lot of people come to see me, and it's through that I'm able to pray deliverance, healing, whatever God needs to do in their life. And so I seem to operate in those three gifts of the Spirit most often. And I want to give some examples uh, at the end of my message. So when we think about discernment, have you ever been to uh, a 3D movie and you forgot to pick up your glasses? I I've done that. I, I forgot to get my glasses. And, and so I'm at, I'm at the theater and, and, and all of a sudden the, 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 the picture comes on and what is it? It's all blurry. And then I remember, oh yeah, I'm at a 3D movie. I need to get the glasses. Otherwise, the movie would be blurry. Some of you are living in a blurry life, a blurry world, because you're not operating in discernment of spirits. This is a spiritual world. This physical world is influenced by the spirit. The physical is just a shadow. So if you can see my shadow, those of you, the, the shadow, that's the physical world. It's not real. I'm real. I'm causing the shadow. The spiritual world is real. The physical world is a shadow. So just like when you go to see a 3D movie and you're looking at the world and you're trying to understand the shadow. I don't know if you've ever, uh, ever studied the philosopher Plato. The shadow isn't what's real. It's what's making, or Socrates, it's what's making the shadow. So you need to have discernment of spirits. Discernment of spirits is spiritual intuition. You just sense something. Like you came into the service this morning and you just sense God. That's discernment of the Holy Spirit. Or on several occasions, uh, people who didn't even know each other, but they're prophets and they operate in discernment of spirits. And they said, do you know, Pastor Lynn, that when you walk back and forth, there's an angel, a mighty huge angel that follows you and it's just covering you. What that angel's doing is covering my mind, my emotions, so the enemy can't tamper with me as I preach. It protects me. I've had other prophets who've come into our service, and some of you, and, and you've told me that there's an angel that's posted right there where the American flag is. And they said it's a huge angle, like a huge angel, like from floor all the way to the ceiling, and it has this like wings open, and it's like covering the service. It's like interceding for us. The Bible says in Hebrews 1.16, don't you know that angels are ministering spirits sent to serve those who shall inherit salvation? So there are ministering spirits. We also know there are warring spirits. We know there are spirits that fight for us. There are messenger spirits that give us messages. And there are harvesting spirits or harvesting angels. So that one day, we're all going to die. We're going to give up this body because I am a spirit. I have a soul and I live in a body, but this ain't me. I'm going to give up this body and my spirit and soul is going to be taken into the presence of God by a harvesting angel. A harvest is one who, 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 who takes the, the crop when it's ready. Those of you who are farmers, you know, it takes a crop 
and so it can be used. So God wants us to be discerning of spirits. He wants us to be able to see when angels are, are operating. He wants us to be able to know when the Holy Spirit is moving in a service or when the Holy Spirit is moving in our life. Because often the Holy Spirit is trying to do something in your life and it's hard because he's trying to, he's trying to mold you and shape you into the image of Christ. And you know, that's, that's difficult. Sometimes it's painful. And what happens is we resist it. We think it's of the devil. Well, that's of the devil. Well, that's of the devil. In actuality, it's of God. He's trying to move in your life. He's trying to minister. And you, and you need to put on the 4D glasses. And you need to say, oh, that's God. That's God. He's operating in my life. He, sh he loves me so much that he knows this is damaging to my life, to my soul. And so he's trying to move me from here to here. He's trying to set me free. So we need to put on the four dimensional glasses, the glasses that enable us to see into the spiritual realm. That's discernment of spirits. So all of a sudden, everything becomes clear. You begin to see how God is operating, how God is moving in your life. So discernment of spirits is not just discernment of demonic spirits. It's also discernment of good spirits, angels. We know angels are ministering spirits. They're spirits. They're angels. Angel just means messenger. So there are messenger spirits and also discernment of the Holy Spirit. Where is the Holy Spirit moving? Well, we also definitely need discernment of evil spirits. And uh, as I was studying this past week, I came across this quote uh, that really makes it clear. The supernatural gift of discerning identifies, the supernatural gift of discernment identifies the type of spirit that is influencing you or influence your family, your home, or influencing your church, or influencing the organization, influencing a situation, or influencing the atmosphere. If it's a demonic spirit that's doing that, often demonic spirit work in pairs. For example, anger. A spirit of anger will bring on a spirit of strife. A spirit of jealousy will bring on a spirit of control. They'll work together. A spirit of deception will operate closely with a spirit of manipulation. A spirit of anxiety will often bring on a spirit of fear. A spirit of greed will lead to a spirit of envy. A spirit of lust will lead to a spirit of immorality that will entice you to do things against your marriage vows. And a spirit of depression will often lead to a spirit of suicide. So that word discernment, where God gives someone else the ability to discern whether a message or a logos, a word, is from the Spirit of God or another spirit, that word discern is diachrisis. It means to see into, dia is through, to see through, to be able to distinguish, to be able to discern. God, is this where you're operating? Or is this the enemy? God, what's happening here? Is this something you're trying to teach me? Or is this the enemy trying to steal from me? You need discernment of spirits to know the difference. It's not something you're going to be able to figure out in your mind. You need Holy Spirit insight. And often it's not just something that you know. It's something that you feel. You can just sense it. It's like God just gives you a revelation. That's what it is. It's a revelation. So these are the revelation gifts. The, the second of the revelation gifts are the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom. And those two are like twins, or they're like si uh, opposite sides of the same coin. They operate very closely together. So the word or the logos of knowledge is the word of gnosis, so that you know something that will help you. It will unlock something in your life. So when I think about a word of knowledge, I think about it like a key. So this is uh, my church key, and I take this with me all the time. And this key will unlock any door in this church so that I can do what God has called me to do. So it's like a key. It unlocks things. It reveals answers. It opens the doors. It it. It shows me the root of strongholds. A word of knowledge, for the most part, is looking somewhere in the past or in the present. 
Sometimes a word of knowledge will show something from your past, a wrong agreement that you made, something that was spoken over you, some kind of trauma in your life, and you'll have a word of knowledge, and, it'll, and all of a sudden everything will make sense of why you're stuck, why you are the way you are. That would be a word of knowledge. It's not something you can figure out in your mind. It's something that God gives you. A word of wisdom takes that word of knowledge where you are, and it shows you how to get to where you need to be. So a word of wisdom is a plan of action. Sometimes a word of wisdom is a word of warning. Don't do that, because if you do that, it's going to lead to this, and you don't want this. So sometimes a word of knowledge and a word of wisdom is a word of warning. Don't, don't, don't make that. Don't go in this direction. Look at the precedence. Look at where this is going to lead. So as I mentioned uh, just a few minutes ago, uh, as an apostolic pastor, I operate most in the revelation gifts. I have the opportunity uh, to, to pray for people. I've prayed literally for, for thousands of people uh, for deliverance, that God would set them free from a stronghold. And I know I can't do that. I can't deliver anyone or, or, for, or for someone to be healed or someone who is stuck. And, and I see where God wants to take them. God gives me a vision. I see the potential in people. And God will give me a word of wisdom. He'll show me the steps that they need to take to get to this place in their life. I don't know how I know it. I just know it. I can spend some time with you, and it won't take me very long, and I know exactly what God wants to do in your life. I just see it. It's a word of wisdom. And what God will do is he'll give me a word of knowledge like a key to unlock what's blocking it and what's keeping you. It's been an amazing journey in my life as a Christian. We cannot be effective in this world as ministers without the gifts of the Spirit moving in our life. See, I know what it is to try to be a pastor without moving in the gifts of the Spirit. I saw a lot of people leave my office the same way that they came in. I remember one particular gentleman, he was very successful in business. And, uh, and he had a stronghold in his life. And um, I, I don't want to say exactly what it was, but um, you know, it, it caused him, he, he was arrested for it, and it just didn't make any sense. He loved his wife, and, with, and he just, it just didn't make any sense. And he said, I don't know, it just compels me, it just comes over me. And I didn't know how to help him. Today I could help him. This was at my church in South Carolina. I understand now with the sermon of spirits, words of knowledge, words of wisdom. We need them operating in their life, in our life, because as it says in 1 Corinthians 12, 7, that the manifestation of the spirit, the charisma, is given to each one for the profit of all, so that all can be helped, so that all can be strengthened. We need the gifts of the spirit operating in our life. This past week, uh, there, there's a really good friend of mine, and I had an opportunity uh, to pray with him. And um, there were some things that were holding him back, and, and, uh, and there were strongholds. And so uh, we, it's like we were stuck. And, and so I, I just prayed. I said, Lord, show me. Show me the key. Show me the key. And, and a word of knowledge will often come uh, as a picture. You just see something. Um, like I remember one time I saw the swing set and I said, does this swing set mean anything to you? And, and you know, it, it was, there was some trauma associated with that swing set. Often you'll just hear a word. Uh, I'll, say, I'll say a word, you know, does, does a fire, I, I'm hearing fire hydrant. What, you know, what is that? You, you know, so you can get a word of knowledge as a word, you can get it as a picture or you can get it as a pain. Um, you know, I, I've got a pain in my shoulder. Did, did something happen to you? You know, you know. So, or you can get it as as like a vision or a video, where it's like a, a a series of pictures. And that's what happened this past week as I was praying, uh, you know, with a good friend of mine. And and um, what I saw was I saw uh, an an engine. The the hood was up, and all I saw was an engine. And I mean, it was a big engine. And I was, and I'm no mechanic, so you, those of you who are mechanics, you're going to say, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Uh, but it was old-fashioned engine, you know, like the kind of have today. And, uh, and I, I took the wing nut off of the, uh, the, the, 
the air, the air filter top, and I lifted the top off, and I picked up the air filter, and it was just full of gunk. It was just, it was black. It was dirty. And so if you know anything about an engine, it doesn't matter how strong or how powerful that engine is. Whatever the potential and capabilities of that engine, if the air filter is all gunked and all, and all then that engine is not going to operate at full capacity. And so when I said to this to this person, I said, I see this huge engine that God obviously, you know, that you're a powerful force in the kingdom of God, but there's this filter and it's all dirty. It's gotten all gunked up. Does that mean anything to you? And bam, he had a revelation. He began to see the things that were in his life that had clogged up the Holy Spirit from moving through him. And we prayed through those things. It was a beautiful deliverance. It was a beautiful uh, a time of God just anointing and coming over this person. So God, you know, he gave a, a word of knowledge, and then we moved on with a word of wisdom. So God, you know, wh where do we go from here? So a word of wisdom uh, is like a map. Now, uh, only people who have been born in the 20th century are going to understand this. Anybody born in the 21st century is going to have no idea uh, what this is. But this is actually a map. And a map, for those of you who were born, you know, in the 21st century or late 20th century, a map was actually something that you looked at that showed you where you were and gave you directions to where you need to go. That's like a word of wisdom. And, and on this is the map of the United States. And it says on the front, you know, the mileage and driving time. So we actually had to look those things up at one time. Uh, but now you just tell your phone. So let's say that, that um, I'm praying with you and, and, and God says, uh, I hop. And I say, you know, that's a word of knowledge. Does, does IHOP mean anything to you? You know, International House of Pancakes. Actually, it means International House of Prayer. That God wants you to go to Kansas City. That there's something in an International House of Prayer. It's this worship ministry by Mike Bickle. God wants you to go. And this is actually a true story. God wants you to go to this International House of Prayer. He has a word for you there. He's going to do something in your life. So in the old days, you look at the map and you say, okay, I'm in Florida. How do I get to Kansas City, where the National House of Prayer is? You know, today we just tell our phone, take me to Kansas City, right? So, so the word of knowledge was we're praying for direction, and IHOP comes to my mind, IHOP. And it wasn't International House of Pancakes, but International House of Prayer. And you need to go there, and God's going to give you direction, and God's going to speak to you there, and you're going to come back different. So that's a word of knowledge and a word of wisdom. And, and God just gives you information that you wouldn't know as you open yourself up to the Holy Spirit. So I want you to stand with me. I have so many stories I could tell you that God has used in my life. I had a, a lady, she was in her 60s. She had fibromyalgia. It was during a healing deliverance. And, and uh, she came in w with a, a walker. And, uh, and our, I was praying over her. There was two chairs. And I was praying over her. And, and I had this word that she had unforgiveness toward her father. I said, tell me, tell me about your relationship with her father. And she just began to break down, and she was crying. And she said, my father molested me from preteens all the way through my teens. And I'm so angry with him. And I said, you need to forgive him. That's the word of knowledge. Tell me about your father. Word of wisdom, you need to forgive him. And I can't forgive him. I, I can never forgive him. I said, forgiveness isn't taking him off the hook. Forgiveness is taking that debt that he owes you, and you give it to God. I say, God, my dad now owes you my debt. It's too burdensome for me. And so she was able to just by faith say, God, I forgive my dad. And as soon as she said that, she stood up. And she goes, it's gone. It's gone. And I had forgotten. And I go, What? She goes, the pain, the pain I've had for 27 years, it's gone. She left without that walker. That's a word of knowledge, word of wisdom, discernment of spirits. Bam, she's set free. We cannot do this Christian walk without the gifts of the Spirit. It's the gifts of the Spirit is where we're the fragrance of Christ in this world to both the saved and to those who are perishing. So I want you to close your eyes. Spirit, you are welcome in this place. You are welcome. We need you. We can't do this without you. And forgive us for trying. 
So Holy Spirit, right now, bam, drop discernment of spirits on people. That people can see, God, where you've been operating their life and where they resisted you. But Lord, let them see where the enemy has been trying to steal from them. And they can begin to resist them. Let discernment of spirits begin to operate. Father, begin to drop words of knowledge. Let people begin to see things, pictures, visions, words that are going to be like a key that are going to unlock things in their life. They're going to reveal answers, resolve problems. Words of knowledge begin to move here. Let pictures, let videos, visions, let your people begin to see things. Let them begin to hear your voice. God, so many people have said to me, I've never heard God speak. That's because they didn't know how you were speaking, God, that you speak sometimes just in a picture, sometimes in a word, sometimes in a vision, sometimes in a dream, sometimes with a pain in our body somewhere, you're trying to tell us something. So, Father, release words of knowledge. Lagos, revelations. And, Father, begin to release words of wisdom action steps, plans where people have been stuck and they didn't know where to go, they didn't know what to do they're, they're, they're trying to make a decision and God they've been trying to figure it out in their soul, in their mind and they need Lord a word of wisdom they need a revelation plan from you God on how to get from plan from A to B God show them now how to do it, show them exactly what they need to do, show them exactly what the barriers are that's keeping them from getting from here to there If you would like to have the gifts of the Spirit begin to operate in your life, especially words of knowledge, words of wisdom, and discernment of spirits, then I want to encourage you to come right away and stand here in the front. The Holy Spirit's been speaking to you through this message, and you're hearing the Holy Spirit say to you, that's you, that's a word of knowledge, that's you. Then you need to come and stand here in the front. Just come and stand here in the front. That these gifts of the Spirit will begin to activate in your life. And words of knowledge will be normal. Words of knowledge is normal for me. All I have to do is just get quiet and get still, get my mind blank so the Holy Spirit can speak to me, and He does. He'll give me a word, a picture, sometimes a vision, and He speaks to me. He gives me the word of wisdom. He gives me a plan, shows me what I need to do, how I can help someone. God wants this to be natural in your life. So I want to encourage um, our intercessors just to come and begin to pray. Pray for those who are here in the front. Spirit will just come upon each person here and the gifts of the Spirit will be released that they'll begin to see what's been blocking them, what's been keeping them from the, the abundant life, the pleroma that Jesus said, where he said I've come that you might have life in the overflow in the abundance Father we release overflow here God we are the overflow church, and God you want us to live up to our name we release overflow the whole Spirit in this place. Abundance. May the gifts of the Holy Spirit flow as those who have just are standing here, Lord, waiting to be prayed for. God, begin to open their heart up, releasing the power gifts of miracles, faith, and healing. God, opening their voice to the gifts, the spoken gifts of tongues, interpretation tongues, and prophecy. And Lord, begin to minister to their soul give them words of knowledge where they begin to see things. They begin, Things begin to make sense to them, Lord. Just begin to download the Holy Spirit. Let them see you. Let them see pictures, God. Visions. God, let words just begin to fall. Lord, let there be a transformation here. Lord, we are, we are, we are transformed from glory to glory. So there's a, there's a lot of people here in the front. Lord, I thank you for being here. So just remain patient. Someone will come and pray with you. So just 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 continue to stay. And as you've been prayed for, you can.
return to your seat so we'll know who to pray for next. But God's going to do a work in your life. So as you're just waiting to be prayed for, just say, Holy Spirit, speak to me. And I, I want to share a testimony of what happened. I was um, at a church in Baton Rouge. And I was at a conference there. And I was in the front just like this. And I was waiting to be prayed for. And I had a vision. And in this vision, I was up on a hillside. And I was looking down. And I saw a large group of people, three, four, maybe 500 people, and they were dressed in normal clothes, and they were just looking around. They, they, they were distracted. They were just kind of looking around. And then that picture stopped, and there was just, just blackness. There was blank. And then the picture came alive again, and a light was shining on them, and they were looking up. They were looking up at this light. And revelation was coming over their face. It's like they saw who they were. And then the picture went blank again. And then it came on again. And this time, they were dressed in camouflage. They were dressed for war. And they weren't facing me. I was, I was watching them at, at, a, at a side angle. And all of a sudden, they did an about face and they faced directly toward me as if they were waiting for me to give them marching orders. I've never forgot that vision. And it was before the pastor ever came and prayed for me. So just by you coming forward, I'm believing that God's going to be giving you visions. God's giving you words of knowledge, discernment of spirits. God wants you to be the fragrance of Christ in this world. And the way we do that is through the gifts of the Spirit. hot 
the gifts that were given to you through the laying on of hands. So I say, Holy Spirit, stir us up. Fan the flame, God, of those gifts. Passion, rise up, God, in us. Passion, fire, rise up, oh Holy Spirit. Let the gifts be normal and natural for us. That we as a church, South Brandon Worship Center, that we will operate in the supernatural. The overflow of our relationship with our Father will just come out of us. The sick will be healed. The oppressed will be set free. The kingdom of God will be preached. God, let overflow just fall. Let overflow just flow through us, God. Let abundance, play Roma, overflow of God, fall. Even as you're standing there at your seat or if you're seated now, just ask for the overflow of God to come upon you. Just say, oh, Holy Spirit, you are the gift giver. You, you created all the heavenly lights, the stars, millions upon millions, billions of them. And every good and perfect gift comes from you. I receive your gifts, Holy Spirit. Just pray that prayer. Say, oh, I receive your gifts, Holy Spirit. He's not holding back on you. He's not overlooking you. He hasn't run out. They're there for you. He wants you to be the fragrance of Christ. He wants you to change the atmosphere of your home, your church, where you work, everywhere you go. He wants you to be a carrier of the fragrance of Christ, the aroma of Christ. And the aroma of Christ are the gifts of the Holy Spirit flowing in us. thank you that we don't have to figure it out on our own. And all we have to do is just get still and you'll give us words of wisdom. And Lord, you'll show us what's, what's blocking us. You'll give us words of knowledge. salvation, just getting saved and going to heaven. But we got a job to do between here and heaven. We each have a call in our life. We need the Holy Spirit. We need the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We need the motivational gifts moving in our life. We need to dream big. Do great things for the kingdom of God. Can you say amen to that? So just just in your spirit, say, God, I can't do this without you. I need your gifts, Holy Spirit. I need you, Holy Spirit. I need you, Holy Spirit. I, can you not hear me? This is how I pray. Holy Spirit, I need you. I, I couldn't pray over that person this past week. I had nothing to give them. I said, Holy Spirit, I need you. I am empty. I am nothing without you. Wow, watch God do things through you. Len Harper is nothing. I have nothing. I know who I am. I am nothing. There was a person who was voted least likely to be a minister in high school. It had been me in 12th grade, I promise you. They just said, that guy has nothing to offer. The Holy Spirit in you can do great things. Just let him. Let him go. Well, God bless you. Thank you for coming to South Brandon Worship Center. We encounter God today, didn't we? It's been awesome. God showed up. So next Sunday, we're going to be looking at the spoken gifts. Make sure you invite someone to come to South Brandon Worship Center. Be a light to the world. In Jesus' name.